he's way mentally tougher than uh, than LeBron James, mm -hmm. and he won with less help for the for those, for those back to back rings. I mean, those rings against that he played against uh, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and he played in a tougher conference and still got the seven championships. The East was the East was weak when LeBron was playing in. Okay. Even LeBron um, was saying Kobe was better than him. Okay, before okay, because a lot of people like to use this clutch shit, right? As a as a staple of an argument, and I'm a clutch player, right? Before clutch, Michael, yes. clutch, before yes. my, before Michael Jordan, before Michael Jordan became clutch, who was who was considered clutch then? Uh, uh, Larry Bird. So Larry Bird was considered clutch. That was the pinnacle of. A, a, a player <laughs> if you want to be the best player in the earth this is the, what you have to but it was no thing it was no thing hey shout out to Gilbert Arenas um, Gil does a great job you can tell he's well prepared for any debate argument conversation about NBA basketball or basketball in general very articulate well spoken knows his history of the game and I think that intimidates and frustrates people and he sticks to facts that support his argument and a lot of people like Dreamers Pro Show they don't understand how to handle that on top of that Gil actually played in the NBA against some of the top players um, that have ever played in the NBA. Um, you may not know me. I'm not a big time national player, but I did have the opportunity to play basketball at Purdue. I had a chance to play against Gilbert Arenas when they were number one at Arizona. We, we had the fortunate opportunity of beating Gil's team when they were number one. Um, and he was a hell of a player. Boy. I was the leading scorer for my team for Purdue when we beat Gil's team. Just so you know a little bit about me, but I am nowhere near an NBA player like Gilbert Arenas, though. I'm not trying to say that I know where I stand, and it's nowhere near uh, Gilbert and other NBA players. But I just wanted the people to know uh, that I did play uh, basketball at a high level just not as high as Gil. Um, but Dreamers Pro Show shows how people have a difficult time dealing with facts that conflict with their favorite players. And this argument about who is the GOAT, who's better, uh, and who's a better overall basketball player, LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, or even Kareem. Gil handles it well, and he backs it up with the fact that there is not much criteria that people use as a standard to judge who is the best player, uh, who is a better defender, who's the greatest of all time. There, there's no standards that everybody uses to come up with a answer for these questions. And Gil does a great job of defending that position. And people have a hard time defeating it because there's no way to defeat it if there's no standard. Like when you go to college, um, a lot of times they will use grade point average, SAT and ACT scores, that is the standard. But with basketball, there is no standard that is similar to that. Um, so it becomes hard to definitively pick a best player of all time, the greatest player of all time, the best defender. And you know, let, let me just play some of this. So let, let's listen to a lot of these arguments that, that Gil makes so you can understand what I'm talking about. Now, I want to get in on this argument about who's a better player, Kobe or LeBron or anybody versus LeBron. Because at some point, you do have to use statistics. And statistics will show that LeBron is better than most people that you think he's not better than. 
And Gil does a great job of pointing out the fact that people will say Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, better scorers, uh, or Carmelo Anthony, um, Kevin Durant, all of these people are better scorers than LeBron. But then you have to laugh at the fact that LeBron is the NBA's all-time leading scorer. LeBron has scored more points than anybody. And then you're going to have a hard time <laughs> dealing with the fact that he's high in assists as well. Yes, he's high in turnovers. That's going to happen when you have that ball in your hand a lot. But you do have to laugh at the idea that you're calling someone a worse scorer than someone else when the person you say is worse has scored more points than anyone else. And then, it, it, remember, if we're talking about any sporting activity, you have to actually play that sport to generate any statistic. If you're not playing, then you're not generating statistics. So then you got to laugh again because it is a skill to be able to have longevity such as LeBron. So to be able to score all of these points, he had to be in the game scoring. So you want to use longevity to knock LeBron? Well, how are you going to do that if he's in the game scoring the points? It's not LeBron James's fault. He's able to play the games that he played and score the ball in the way that he does. Now, I want to talk about his scoring, and I want to look at the way Shaq scores the ball and the way Hakeem or Patrick Ewing score the ball. Now, Shaq, his moves are not as advanced as Hakeem Olajuwon. That's okay. They have different bodies and different skill sets. But if I'm Shaquille O'Neal and all I need is a basic drop step dunk, a basic fake spin, turn, hook shot, then I'm going to use that because my body is built in a way that other people cannot stop me. So why do I need to have the footwork of Kareem and the moves of Hakeem Olajuwon if no one can stop me from spinning, from drop stepping, from fake spinning, stepping in, baby hook shot. If nobody can stop my moves, why would I need advanced moves? Why do I need to shoot threes and fadeaways if you cannot stop me from getting to the hole and putting it in with a hook shot or dunk? Now why am I bringing that up? Because I do agree that LeBron lacks a consistent mid-range pull-up, especially off the dribble. He lacks a lot of post-game. I agree with that. But again, just like Shaq, if you can't stop me from getting to the cup, and I'm talking about LeBron, one of his best attributes is being able to get to the cup and score and be able to score through contact. Why am I going to knock LeBron if he can get to the cup and score through contact? I'm not because that's what he does and he does it at a high rate, a high efficient rate. So yes, is his game limited in some ways when compared to the greatest scorers like Carmelo Anthony? Um, Kevin Durant, Michael Jordan, yes. But where he's limited, he picks up where he's great, which is driving to the hall. And now let's look at defense. Let's listen to what Gilbert said in reference to Dreamers Pro Show, saying that Kobe Bryant has better defense than LeBron. Let's take a listen. Which I forgot, which is something I never thought about. You said... I forgot Post, to pull posting up. Po posting up is four, ISO is five. Right, right. And I was mm -hmm. like, damn. And you were like, that's what sets apart Carmelo from him. Who do you think was a better score, LeBron or Kobe? Forget about the all-time points. Kobe. You as a score yourself. Kobe. As a better score? Yeah. But, but that's why I, I even asked saw you. The, I even saw the video. I saw the video of you. This was before I started talking sports. You was in a training room, and it was like, uh, you see the shots that this man hit? You were like, uh -huh. you see the shots that he hit? He's like, it's like, it's people that aren't even there next to him. He's like, mm -hmm. you're like five people on him. 
You see the shots that he, that's what you were saying about Kobe. You're like, he was confused. Like, what kind of shots yeah. is this dude making? But, but, but that's what I'm saying. I know, but, but, but that's why I said it makes you laugh when you say like, a guy who wasn't a natural scorer holding the crown of the best scorer and the most points overall. But this is not about that. It's about you're saying that now if you put him in Kobe's shit together, you're saying LeBron is not an overall better basketball player than Kobe. Not a better scorer, a better basketball player. That's what well, this is. This is basketball. No, no, I've seen him not to me. Kobe plays better. Uh, he's a better offensive player. He's a okay. damn better defensive player. LeBron is a Says better who? rebounder. Says who? Says who? Wait, wait. Look, LeBron is better, the better defender than Kobe. Says who? who, who what, what is your measurements of that? No, I'm gonna ask you as the NBA player. Who's a better defender, LeBron or Kobe? Gilbert, don't do this to me, man. Are you making me? Who's a better defender, LeBron or Kobe? They're both different. Who who is better? When's the last when's the last time you seen the uh, Kobe Bryant chase down blocks and do all that stuff? They're just different. They're different at what they do. They're different at their defensive skills. So how are you measuring the defense itself? Okay, who's better, LeBron or Jordan as a defender? Again, Gil, don't do this to me, man. Gil, don't. How about, how, okay, how about this? How about this? Who who guarded the most talent, Jordan or, or LeBron, in their position? I think it depends on the era that they play. I mean, Kobe. I would say Kobe guarded more talent. I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about LeBron or, or Jordan. Uh, who would Jordan? Jordan Clyde, Clyde, huh? Clyde Drexler. Couldn't go left hand. Didn't know what a left hand was. Uh, well, so, uh, did he did he would he guard Charles Barkley? I know Charles Barkley nope. sometimes get three. Uh, let no. me see. Um, remember back then, back then, see, this is the problem with the argument about Michael Jordan. See, see, Jordan's my number one, but I can argue against his greatness. Um, okay, so Jordan's a goat, Jordan's a goat for you, though. Yes, so if if Jordan was the rarity of one on one players, he never got to play against what he was good at one on one. Everybody else was a system player. That means most of those guys didn't dribble the ball. They didn't know how to dribble the ball. So denying them and keeping them from the ball and then take away their shot, they can't put the ball on the court. Who the fuck did he have to actually guard? Oh man, yo, you're not gonna do this. He didn't go. He didn't go. See, people that may not know basketball probably are clueless in what he's talking about here. If Jordan is the GOAT and he's great at going one-on-one -on -one, iso ball in the post catch and shoot can do it all Gilbert is astutely pointing out the fact then that there was no equal two guard that Jordan would have had to guard that could do the same thing with a similar height o only person that I could think of that was close would be maybe Starks, but he's shorter than Jordan. He's a system player and he's not offensively skilled <laughs> in the same way that Jordan was. Um, and like Clyde Drexler definitely wasn't, could not go left. Um, Magic was limited. Scotty Pippen guarded Magic a lot. I know he's not a two. Um, I mean, I'm. I like the argument that Gil is making here. You think about it. If at that time Jordan was the best at going ISO one on one, mid post, catch and shoot, six six, athletic. 50 inch vertical who is his equal in the 90s who no no one that's the argument Gil is making here and I think a lot of people because of their emotional attachment to Jordan being the GOAT can't look at the argument that Gil is making and he's making a very astute argument here I mean Craig Elo uh, Mark Price at the point for Cleveland. Um, 
Kevin Johnson with the Phoenix Suns. He's at the point. Uh, Dan Marley. Phoenix was at the two. Oh, man. Like, these players, like Gil pointed out, are system players. They're not doing what Jordan was doing. Even though Jordan was in the triangle, he could... The, the triangle allowed him the freedom to catch it in the mid post, to go ISO. Um, the Utah Jazz, I mean, Hornacek, system player. Oh, man, like, uh, like Gil is killing on this argument. He, he's right. Like, today's players, today's two guards, your Stephs, Bradley Bills, oh man, because Steph could be the one or the two. But these guys in the modern day NBA are, are doing what Jordan was doing back then. Everybody can handle, go ISO, post up. I mean, yeah, let me let me let Gil keep cooking. Or he didn't guard no Dwayne Wade, no um he didn't have to guard the Dwayne Wade. He didn't have to grab the, the Allen Iversons. He's he's guarding Chris Mullins and um you're not gonna do this to me. They like, he, you know what I'm saying? He yeah. guarded guys who didn't put the ball. Same thing with Scottie Pippen. Like oh, man. Who, it it might it like Scottie Pippen like who is harder to guard? And and who is harder to guard? Someone like Clay Thompson or someone like uh Jimmy Butler? Oh uh, man, see, that's that's a great comparison because Clay would be more similar to the players that Jordan faced. He's not gonna post you up as much. He's gonna be catch and shoot, catch couple dribbles, shoot. Um, and Jimmy Butler can go off the dribble, can post you up, can go ISO. Yeah, I, I like I like the comparison right there. Hey, Thompson is, is I mean you gotta guard him for like forty eight minutes because you're always running around the You do? If you like deny Thompson. if you if you deny him and take away his shot, what does he do when he get the ball? Who Clay Can't Thompson? Dribble. Yeah, he gained dribble past two dribbles. But he's always And that's that's what he's bringing up. He's more Clay Thompson's more of a prototypical two guard from the eighties and nineties, catch and shoot. If you deny him the ball, he's just gonna keep moving till he gets it. Once he gets it, one or two dribbles, it's going up or he's passing it. That's what Gil is pointing out. It's not like Jimmy Butler, who will bring the ball up the court, go one-on-one -on -one ISO, or uh, will get the ball, get you in the post, back you down, throw you some post moves, or just straight up handle the ball and get to the hole and pull up on you. Like that, that he does that more consistently than a clay would threat because he's always moving he's always a threat of, 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 and, of, of, and, of and guess what and if he's the 10 that means reggie will be what compared to him oh lord you're not gonna do this anymore they, they don't, they don't be coming from the internet and i don't, well, I, don't well, yeah, I mean what i'm saying is back then and then and he's right reggie miller jordan guarded reggie miller and it's much easier to guard that like reggie could put it on the floor but he was much better at moving catching and shooting you're not going to see reggie miller in many clips in and out crossing over through the legs pulling up that's not his game he was a system player moving without the ball catch and shoot catch a couple dribbles he, he's not he's not doing what you know a jimmy butler would do you know what put the ball on the on the on the you see what happened when guys who actually put the ball out of Iverson, you see Jerry Stackhouse, Grant Hill, Penny Hardaway, when those type of guys came into the league, Jordan was the pinnacle. But you, you notice he didn't he, he wasn't guarding those guys much back then, right? You know See? Great comparisons. The pennies, the Grant Hills, the six eight athletic build that could handle and post up they could handle and post up like and like he said then jordan had a tough time guarding them allen iverson he had a tough time guarding them because they can handle 
See, like he's saying, Jordan was the pinnacle of all of that, but he didn't have to guard that on a night in, night out, night out basis, like everyone in the modern NBA has to now. Ron Harper, go get him, Ron. Okay, Ron can't guard. Hey, 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 uh, Pippen, go get them, Pippen. Ooh, Pippen, yeah. Uh, uh, Dennis Rodman, go get him, Dennis Rodman. <laughs> but, but, but Michael Jordan is getting defensive player of the year. Ha! Defensive player, all first team. Who the fuck is he stopping? Craig Elo? See, I have brought up Craig Elo. Catch and shoot, move without the ball, screen pop. Come on, y'all. This is not to diminish Michael Jordan. He's using an argument to highlight things that support his argument. And his argument is, well, who did he have to guard that was similar to him? Because in the modern NBA, more players are similar to Jordan's skill set than not. Man, y'all yo, gonna do this to me. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just, I, it's just questions. It's just questions. <laughs> They're gonna be. They're gonna be talking. They're gonna it's, be talking. Just question. Like I said, <laughs> even in even even in his championship, even in the championship, who 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 did Jordan card in the championships? Oh man, who, who gave Michael Jordan a run for his money? Have a check. Uh, yo, have a check. See, I brought up Je uh, Hornacek. That's who he's talking about. Jeff Hornacek for the Utah Jazz. That's who I brought up too. Again, a system player, like he said, catch and shoot, move without the ball, screen and pop. That's not the same skill set of today's players. It's not. Okay, so I hope you understand Gil's point here. Kobe is a great defender. But Kobe and LeBron have different body types, have different levels of agility and speed and are going to defend differently. You do not see Kobe chasing down people and blocking shots to win games. But you see LeBron doing that, and that is a skill set, a much needed skill set that has saved plenty of games for LeBron and his teams. We're not gonna knock Kobe from not doing that. So the things that LeBron cannot do consistently that Kobe does, we shouldn't knock him. Because there are things defensively Le LeBron does great. Rotating, being in defensive position, blocking shots. Yes, Kobe, for a longer time than LeBron, could stay in front of guards and defend them well off the dribble, yes. But LeBron does things differently. He may be able to bang better with four and five men than Kobe Bryant because he's built differently and has a different defensive skill set, just like he has a different offensive skill set. So we have to look at what people do great and look at their statistics and how they are able to do what they do. And if we look at these things, we will see that LeBron is greater than a lot of people. It's just not going to look like everyone else. And that is okay. And I think that's what Gilbert is pointing out. That's okay. People are great at different things. But to just slight LeBron and push him down because he's not your favorite player, because he doesn't move like your favorite player, he doesn't shoot like your favorite player, he doesn't pull up like your favorite player, or he doesn't do the things you want him to do in the way you want him to, that does not mean he is not great. Because if he wasn't great, he wouldn't be able to accumulate the statistics that he has accumulated. And again, look how long that scoring record lasted. But he's not a great scorer. And again, if everyone can score all these points and get all these assists, then why aren't they doing it? You would have a different argument against LeBron if everybody in the world scored all these points, got all these rebounds and all these assists and it was just so easy, but clearly that's not the case. CSL Podcast, I'm out.